Viruses are ancient. How ancient, we cannot know. And the origins of most of them may remain forever obscure. But when did they start really affecting us, the humans, making us sick and killing us? Well, it all started with agriculture about 12,000 years ago. A milestone for human evolution and the beginning of the end for everything surrounding us that we stopped respecting and started abusing. Agriculture equals domestication of plants and animals, which equals holding species captive for our own benefit. Basically, we started forming the world around us just as we wanted it to be, because it suited us better and because we could. I want those crops around me easier to eat than going off gathering food. I want those animals around me to work for me, those animals to eat, those animals to get their eggs, their wool, their whatever. I'm gonna settle and not move anymore and create a world around me that suits me, my habitat, because it's convenient and because I can, said the human. And then he settled. And so did the viruses. Viruses seem to be nature's way of saying, you're trying to tame me and twist me around to serve you. I'm going to show you now. They are somewhere at the border between chemistry and life, and today they are thought as being in a gray area between living and non-living. But in their defense, they are doing their best to survive. They mutate, they parasitize, they multiply, and they spread. Smallpox and measles viruses are among the oldest that infect humans and they evolved from viruses that infected other animals before us. Animals that we held captive, oh, sorry, <laughs> domesticated. About 70% of human diseases are linked to animal agriculture. Almost all deadly viruses come from animals as a result of our endless insistence of pushing nature to its limits, thus coming more and more in contact with viruses that would have been left alone had we not invaded their space. And the more we invade, the more it becomes clear that viruses really like us. Influenza, the queen flu, originated among birds and other animals such as pigs. Smallpox evolved from an African rodent. Ebola came from bats. HIV came from chimps. And before you go off blaming animals, demonizing and murdering bats and throwing your dogs off the balcony because coronavirus, remember it all started when we invaded their space, when we started piling them up in cages, when we forced them to live in their feces because it was convenient for us. Apparently what's convenient for us is also convenient for the viruses and as it turns out, what is morally unacceptable is also unhealthy, says nature and her brilliant way of enforcing karma, not me. As we humans evolve, we deal with old viruses and then new ones appear, and then we deal with them, and so on and so on. And the more we spread and the more we push nature, the harder it pushes back, becoming deadlier and deadlier, as we are becoming more predatory. By 2050, the human population is expected to reach 9.7 billion and our increasing food demands will continue to drive the conversion of natural areas into managed farmlands, creating crazy opportunities for new interactions between exotic crop and animal species and their previously left alone resident microbial communities. Left alone being the key words here. We cut trees, we kill the animals or cage them and send them to the markets, we disrupt ecosystems and we shake viruses loose from their natural hosts. When that happens, they need a new host and guess who that is? The choices we make about how we occupy this planet has been making outbreaks, epidemics and pandemics inevitable since forever. COVID-19 is just one example. It most likely emerged from a wet market in China, and a wet market is where wild and domesticated animals are packed up alive in cages, one on top of the other, infecting and reinfecting one another with viruses having a party and eventually mutating and jumping from the abused to the abuser. That's us. 
as we keep evolving and spreading, choosing which animals to push to extinction and which animals to use for our own benefit, we establish ourselves as masters of this planet and all its life forms. We are invincible, untouchable, unstoppable. We are entitled, and every time something so insignificant as a virus or a bacteria tries to defeat us, we stand united against it and scream, how dare you? Do you know who I am? Animals have been suffering one way or another because of us. They go extinct, they starve, they are left without a home, they suffer and die in dirty cages among their feces and their blood, and while we are killing them, they are killing us back. Not intentionally, because they would never do that. They are killing us unwillingly, from the inside, with weapons they don't even know they have, transforming thousands of years of immorality into fever, cough and vomit. And yet again, it's all about us, what we can do to keep us safe. We are so important. We can't fall ill, we can't die. We are the kings and queens of this earth. The homo sapiens that has overpowered all other animals will not be humbled by a microorganism. We will fight back, etc, etc, etc. You know, corona means crown in Latin, and coronaviruses are named that because a fringe of large bulbous surface projections create an image reminiscent of a crown. And right now, as we stay locked in our cages, looking at the world from the inside and watching spring arrive and nature heal while we fall ill, that crown seems very well deserving. We are the self-proclaimed kings of this world anyway, and every king and every queen must wear a crown. Hello, I am Valia. If you like the videos, please subscribe and if you can, join me on Patreon and help create more compassionate people. Para la versión del canal en castellano, busquen el enlace abajo.